some have called it the Hall of Fame of Faith. Um, and so if you, the world has their ideas of what the Hall of Fame is, we have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Country Music Hall of Fame, the NASCAR Hall of Fame, uh, all of those type things. But, uh, but God has his Hall of Fame too. And, uh, and so Hebrews chapter 11 and I told you that we were going to be looking at some families uh, uh, or, or dealing with family things uh, for the next couple, at least up till about Father's Day. There's going to be one break in there, I think. But, uh, but Hebrews chapter 11, let's begin reading in verse number 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child, when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promise offered up the, his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thou seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From, the, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob when he was dying blessed both the sons of Joseph. And worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. I'm going to stop right there. And uh, last week we dealt with how to pray for your children. All right? And this week, this is going to be developing faith in your family or developing faith in your children, developing faith in your home. And I believe Abraham was a man of faith. The Bible speaks of it many, many times. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And by the way, the Bible says also in this chapter, in a verse just previous here, it says that without faith it is impossible to please Him. So if we're to please God uh, with our lives, our lives must be lived by faith. There is no substitute for it. There is no other way. In other words, you have to live in such a way, not by the things that you can see and you can touch, by the things that you cannot see and the things you cannot touch. That is very difficult for some people. But I'm going to tell you something. If you can believe that Jesus Christ was buried and rose again the third day, you ought to be able to believe anything that he says. So, now if you look at this particular passage that we just read, there are actually four generations that are mentioned here. You have Abraham. Who was Abraham's son? Isaac. Who was Isaac's two sons? Jacob and Esau. And then it talks about Jacob. And then Joseph was the son of Jacob. So you actually have these generations and every one of them, it says, by faith. And it says, by faith, by faith. So there's something that in, was instilled in this family, not just in Abraham, but something that was instilled in this family to, for them to live by faith. It, it was initiated by Abraham, I do believe. And I, I probably should have made this a Father's Day message, but, uh, but that's all right. Uh, uh, nevertheless, now, again, there's a heritage that, of here, that is here that we see. There's four generations. There's a heritage that is passed down. You know, uh, there are things, perhaps you have something from a father or a grandfather or a, gra a mother or a grandmother or perhaps even a great-grandmother. Perhaps you have 
someone like that, and you have something that is very dear possession uh, of yours, and that is something that you have inherited or part of your heritage. You know, I still have one of my my dad's guns, and I still hunt with it. You know, and things like that, and, and I've been asked to sell it many times, and I, I can't sell that one. You know, that one's mine. You know, and uh, and I can't sell that one. Even my daughter tried to buy it from me, and I wouldn't sell it to her. Uh, not yet, anyway. All right. So, uh, so anyway, uh, and so there are things that are passed down. But I want you to know something that Abraham. I want you to think about this. Abraham never had a house. A lot of times, family members will pass a house along, right? They work hard, they get it all paid for, and they have a house, and, and they pass that on to their kids or their grandkids. Or but you know that Abraham lived in tents his whole life. Isn't that interesting? But there is something that his children got from him that money cannot buy. And that was his life of faith, trusting the Lord, believing in the promises of God. This is the type of heritage that needs to be passed along to our children. Type of, uh, a type of heritage that we need to be living at this very moment. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, uh, his family, I believe Abraham's family, saw the reality of God through Abraham. Think of it. Think about those stories. Think about the Philippian jailer. Do you remember, remember that story? Remember the Philippian jailer? And man, he was about to kill himself. Remember that? He, I mean, he was about to fall on his sword because, man, I, all the prisoners are going to be gone. I, I'm got to kill because he was, he was destined for death anyway. Instead of letting them torture me and beat me, I'm just going to go and kill myself. And then Paul and Silas, remember, or Peter and Silas, you remember that? They came and said, hey, we're all here. Don't worry about that. And then, and then he asked a question, sirs, what must I do to be saved? You remember that? You remember that, that passage? And then he took what he learned, he took what he had, and he passed it on. And it says, and his family also believed. And so it was passed on through, through his children. And this is something, uh, the life of faith or, or developing faith in your family, it, it's an imperative. It's, it's an imperative for us uh, as believers. Now, in, in the first thing that he did, he left not knowing whether he went, not knowing where he was going, he, he went out and left not knowing where he was going. Now, let me just say that, that there are some people that get so attached to familiarity and what I always have known that they refuse to step out on faith and trust God for things that they don't know. You know, sometimes that can be fearful. Sometimes there are doubts that are, that are in our mind and in our heart. But you know what? Uh, you never see the power of God and you'll never have the... the the, the reality of God with you until you step out on, on faith. And I don't know what that is for you. I know what that was for me. When God called me to preach, I, well, let, let me back up a little bit. I remember I was in the middle. I, I used to have several companies. I was in the middle of building houses and developing and all that sort of thing. And at the time, I had about 20 different projects going on. And I remember distinctly, there was, there was, I mean, it wasn't a lightning bolt from heaven. It wasn't, you know, hey, the, the thundering voice from heaven. It wasn't that. There was something inside of me, and I was saved. I was working at church. I was doing all that. But there was something that, that, that God just kind of impressed me or led me, if you would. And this is what he said. He said, I want you to help build a church. Hmm, okay. Okay, God, you know. I mean, I had, I had framing crews that were my employees. They worked for me full time, you know. And I, I, had, I had subcontractors. And I, in my mind, I had, okay, I'll send my framing crew to frame a church. Or I will subcontract a church for it to help them out. I wasn't going to charge them anything. The Lord led me. I'm going to help build a church. And I said, okay, Lord, if you open the door, I'll go through it. And that's easy. You know, when you can't see all the way to the distant future, you know, that's to make those statements, God, I'll follow you. But then there was a missionary that came by the church, and, and guess what he was looking for? He was looking for people to help build a church. And I'm sitting back there, and I say, okay, God, uh, you got this all wrong. I know that's not what you want from me, because he was going to go all the way to Honduras, Central America. And I said, no, no, that's not, that's not what God has for me. No. 
And, he said, and, and in my mind, I, I probably told these stories, but I said, in my mind, this is what I said. I said, God, I said, you know what, that's a long way to go, to go down there and help build a church and, and, and be away from my wife. And this is no, this is, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating and I'm not lying. I'm not, I'm not stretching the truth. I'm sitting out there and I have that thought. And that missionary said, if you want to, you can bring your wife with you. <laughs> okay, God, look, I, I, I got kids. That's a long way to go and to be a long time to be away from my kids. I can't take them to a third world country over there. If you want to, it's no joke. He's up here. If you want to, you can bring your family with you. And finally, I determined that, you know what, that you remember a few weeks ago before when God said, I want you to help build a church, and God was opening the door and saying, hey, I want you to do this. Now, I could have said, no, I'm not doing that. Man, I'm making plenty of money here. I'm, I'm you know, I got it made. I got a house. We, you know, we're, we're comfortable we got everything anybody could ever want. I could have said that. But I didn't. And I said, God, I believe this is what you're leading me to do. And I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to follow you. And I tell you, that decision that I made that day, if I had made the other decision, I would not be here today. All right? So, throughout that journey, well, let me... I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, all right? So I'm just saying you need to give your family something more than monetary goods and worldly possessions when you leave this world. You need to give them something that will last for eternity. You need to give them something that they can know that there's a God in heaven and that you've proven it and he's real. Abraham did that. Abraham did that. Now, let's first of all, we're going to look at faith right here when, in, in regards to this family, especially the family of Abraham. Now, the foundation of faith. Let's look at this first, the foundation of faith. Now, look, let me just say that when Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees, some people say that this was blindly following the Lord. Now, he didn't know where he was going, but he was not blindly following. Because, look, there was a promise that God had given to him that he was going to give him promise look let, let's go and look let's go look at verse number nine it says by faith he sojourned in the land of that if you would if you write in your bible underline that word in the land of promise what does that mean that means that god somewhere in the past said hey i'm going to give you something i'm going to do something for you but you're going to have to follow me and you're going to have to trust me and what did abraham do Look, look at Genesis 11. It didn't stop with Abraham. Look in verse number 11. Through faith also Sarah, this is Abraham's wife. Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now hold on. You have Abraham. He set the precedence. He's believing the promise of God. Now you have Sarah. The wife of Abraham, what is she doing? She's believing the promise that God gave. And she had a son. Promises. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers. Not received, but there's the word promise again. They believed and trusted in that promise. Now look down in verse 17. By faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises. Offered up. I lost my place here. Offered up his only begotten son. Now. So the foundation. The foundation of faith. What is the foundation of faith? Is the promises that God gives us. We see this in this passage right here, the promises. Do you realize that God has a promise for almost everything he's going to encounter? I, look, I, I, I should, probably shouldn't have said almost everything. He has a promise for everything that you're going to encounter in life. Are you hearing me? 
there is no need for us to worry and fear and, and, and have anxiety and all those kind of things because, look, he gives promises. And guess what? Now, I can give a promise, and that promise may not come to pass because I'm a man. I'm a human. But I'm going to tell you, when God makes a promise, you can, you can bet your life on it. That it's going to come to pass because God cannot lie. And every promise that he has ever made has come to pass. And the ones he haven't come, hasn't, that he has made and hasn't come to pass is just because we have not seen them yet. They're on the way. You can rest assured that they're on the way. And so, so for us as parents, it is not just... We have to know the promises of God. Did Abraham know the promises of God? Now look, he didn't even have the whole Bible. The New Testament wasn't written until a thousand years after Abraham ever lived. But we had the whole Bible. We have the promises. We have the complete written, inspired word of God and gives us promises for everything that we're going to encounter. He wants us to believe him and trust him and follow him and obey the promises so that he can prove himself to us and prove himself to our children. He is faithful. There has never been a time where God is not faithful. Never. Never. Never a time. Some of us need to stop listening to everybody else and everything else and start listening to the promises that God gives in his word. God gives us promises for us to claim and to live and to see him and to know him and to know his power and to know his person. That's why he gives it. This is the foundation of faith, all right? The foundation. But now let's look at the instruction of faith. Look in verse number 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. Now what, what is that next word? Words are very important in the Bible. What's that next word? Living in tabernacles, what is it? With. He was not alone. Sometimes we think, hey man, we're on this journey all along, all alone, and, and we're, we're, we're making all these decisions solo, and man, we're, we're you know, you know what it says, with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him. Now, Isaac was his son, Jacob was Isaac's son. So there's three generations mentioned in that one verse right there. And so it says he was with them, he was with them. Look, don't make the mistake. Look, our children see everything how we live. They see everything, all the decisions we make. They see how we live. They see, look, if all we do is analyze, okay, how are we going to make this work? Or, or, or we make statements like, I have worked my whole life, and I have built this, and I have done this, and I have. Let me tell you the first question that Isaac asked, at least I can tell, that is written, that's recorded in the Bible, is when they were headed up the mountain to Mount Moriah, and he was going to be sacrificed, Isaac did not know he was going to be sacrificed, and he asked a question. He says, he says, there is wood and there is fire, but where is the sacrifice? You know what Abraham's first word was, even coming out of his mouth to answer that question? What was it? What? God. That is the first way to answer that question. The first word out of his mouth was God. God will supply himself a lamb. That was his first. Now look, when your children come and ask you questions, there are moments that you can that are teachable moments that you can use to let them know that, hey, God, this is what God says. Now, not, not just what I think or what you need to do or give some type of counsel. I know that's what parents are for. I get it. But look, have your opinion and have your viewpoint anchored in the promises of God and knowing what God says so that you can instruct your kids to do that, to live that way. This is instruction. Sarah followed this. Now, I wrote down a few things here. Uh, let me find it here. All right. Now, look. So we have Abraham, and he's instructing that to Isaac. Now, I want you Think about this for a moment. We always view, you remember when, when Abraham went to go sacrifice Isaac on top of Mount Moriah? We always, most of the time, view that from Abraham's vantage point. But I want you to think about that from Isaac's vantage point for a moment. He's walking up the mountain not knowing where the sacrifice was. And his daddy says, God will provide himself a lamb. And then his daddy began to bind him. And lay him upon an altar. 
and began to draw back. Can you imagine this? And his daddy that loved him so dearly is about to sacrifice, and he's got his hand back with the dagger in it about to sacrifice his own son. Can you imagine what was going through the mind of Isaac? And then, in the background, you could hear the bleeding of a ram caught in a thicket. And the God of heaven said, stop. Do you think Isaac ever forgot that? That is something that he'll carry with him to all of his life. And I'm telling you, I'm not telling you that God's going to tell you to sacrifice your children. But I'm going to tell you, God will demand obedience. And your children need to see that obedience in you. And you need to know that, look, God holds a priority in your life like no one else does. God has a place that no one else has in your life. And they need to see that. And I'm going to tell you that is instruction that you need to give. Look, look with me. Verse number uh, 20. Now look, remember, Abraham and Isaac. All right? That whole promise. You know, the, the promise that, uh, and that whole experience. Do you think Isaac got a glimpse of God that day? All right, now let's look. Then it says, verse 20, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Now, what does that mean, things to come? That means those were promises. Those were promises. Things that had not yet happened yet, but promises that God had given that, that was going to come to pass. And it says that he blessed him. In other words, he instructed his children about things that God was going to do and wanted to do with their life and through their and he was instructing them. Now it's interesting. Look in verse number 21. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon this staff. What does that mean? He carried out the same thing. What do you think Jacob said to his children? You know, Jacob had a wrestling match one time. You know, I, I, tell, I tell stories to my kids sometimes about the good old days when I played sports. You know, I could out jump, out throw, out, you know, all that. You know what I'm talking about. Can you imagine the story that Jacob told about the wrestling match that he had that he wrestled all night? And his name was changed after that moment. That was when his hip came out of joint. And he'd never, he'd always walk with a limp from then on, he'd be changed. Now look down to Joseph, verse 22. By faith Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Now look, hold on. There was a few hundred years after Joseph had died. And he is, he, what, what is Joseph doing? He's believing the promise that God had given about the promised land. And he's saying, look, whatever it is you do when I die, you don't leave my bones here in, this, in Egypt. You don't here you carry them with you all the way to the land because God's going to give it he believed it it was real to him and we need to use every opportunity that we can to let our children know that the God of heaven is real and he is real to us and 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 it, use those times that God gives us to instruct our children about trusting God and the promises of God but you have to know them you have to know those promises you know if, if church is the only avenue through which they hear and know about God, I'm going to tell you, this is why our work is in the place of this end. It must come from the home. Do you realize that the responsibility to train children is not given to the church? Listen to me. It is not given to the church. God gave those children to you as their parents. He didn't give them to me. He gave me my children. For me to teach them. And by the way, I've got stories. You've heard me tell all these stories all over these years about how God did miraculous things for us on our travels and our journeys and other countries and all those kind of things. And my wife knows those things. And my wife would be the one asking those questions. What are you going to do? But my response was always, this is what God has done. And this is, I don't know what God's going to do, but he's going to do something. I don't know how many stories my children actually remember. 
But I want you to know that they probably remember some of them. And that the God of heaven is real and alive. And he's a God of promises and he'll meet their needs. So that's my instruction. You, you understand, I live my life like that. I'm getting ahead of myself again. Don't miss the opportunity to instruct your family. Then the next thing here is the demonstration of faith. Look in verse number 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So, uh, did, did Abraham believe God and did he demonstrate that with his life? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm saying to you and I today, as parents, as leaders of our home, we must demonstrate this as well. We must dem- not just say it. It's one thing to say it. Oh, we can trust God. But it is another thing entirely to say I trust God and to say, all right, this is a promise, family, and this is the promise we're going to claim, and God's going to make this com- promise come to pass in our life. Kids to see that promise come to pass through your life. Now, like I said, I, I have they, my, their time with me living in my home is past. They have families of their own, houses of their own, children of their own, all those kind of things. And, and I hope that they remember some of those stories, that it was alive to them, that God was real to them. But now it is their turn. Do you understand? It is their turn to live by the promises of God and to see God and to pass the reality of God on to their children. I have two grandchildren now. And I I can do what I can do, but look, they must do what they have to do to to make God real to them. Claiming the promises of God, proving the promises of God, allowing God to see, allowing them to see God work through their life. Again, if church is the only place that they God or hear of God, I'm going to tell you, shame on you. Do you tell your children how God is working in your life? Do you tell your children? I'm going to tell you, why is it we can talk about everything? We can talk about ball. We can talk about weather. We can talk about school. We can talk about family. We can talk about people, other people. We can talk about friends. We can talk about vacations. We can talk about everything. But the bad thing is that a lot of our children don't even know when our parents got saved. Look, our children must be taught. And it has to come through the parent. Look, the church is here to reinforce and to help you. But it is not here. Our primary responsibility is not to teach and train your children. That is the responsibility of the parent. To teach and train that child or children. And we're here to be to help you, to encourage you, and, and to and to cheerlead. Man, I'll coach and I'll cheerlead all at the same time. Man, you, trust God, believe God, show them what God can do, prove God through your life. And I'll pray for you all along the way. Do your children know that there's a God in heaven because they've seen him live through your life? What do your children see? Now look, what is the very first? I think we started with verse number 8. It says, by faith, Abraham. Could we put our name in there? I'm not saying exactly the same story, exactly the same promise. That's not what I'm talking about. Could we, could, but could God say, by faith, this is what Rodney did? By faith, this is what Adam did. By faith, by faith, this is what this person did. Can they say that? Can God, could God say that? I'm going to tell you, a lot of us, most, most of us want the blessings of God. We want the blessings of God and we want, Uh, the promises of God, but I'm going to tell you, it must be that we not only know it, but we instruct it and we live it out, we demonstrate it. So faith in our home is foundation, that is the foundation, the promises of God. 
You know, you ought to tell your children, hey, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you, when I was a little boy, I called upon the name of the Lord, and I realized that I was a sinner, and I realized that Jesus was a Savior, and he paid my sin debt. And I was a little boy when I did that, and that was a promise that I claimed in my life. And I want to tell you, that promise came to true because he has redeemed me, he has bought me, he has purchased me. I'm saved, I'm born again, and I know it, and I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, and that's a promise that I have and I can hold on to and I can believe and I can trust and I can follow. And he's real to me because he lives inside of me. That's the easy one. What about, well, my God shall supply all your need. Or do we run around with our, around the house like a chicken with our head cut off, wondering how we're going to do this and how this is going to happen? And how, or can we say, hey, we can rest, we can have rest in him knowing that you know, this is a promise that God gave. And we can sit down as a family and we can say, look, we're going to trust God and we're going to pray about this. And we're going to say, God, this is what you've promised in your word. And Lord, we're waiting on you to bring that to pass and we're waiting on you to see it. And I'm going to tell you, when it passes, you need to acknowledge him and you need to let your children know this is the God of heaven that did this. Look, we need to develop faith in our homes. Look, our children need to know. Our children need to see. They need to be instructed. They need to be shown as well by a demonstration in our life. So faith is, fa is the foundation. Faith is also the instruction that we must give, and then also faith must be demonstrated. So... If God were to examine your life right now, what could he say about that? Could he say, by faith, this is how you're living? By the way, something I didn't tell you, if you go, uh, I think it's verse number 11, is they, they trusted from birth. And then I think in verse number 13, it's about death. From birth all the way to death, they're trusting the Lord. That's the way our lives are supposed to be. Trusting the Lord with all, everything we are, with all that we are, everything we have, with all of our heart. How's the faith of your family? Are you instructing them like you ought to? Are you demonstrating it like you ought to? Perhaps you need to get into your Bible a little more and start learning the promises of God, knowing and understanding and believing and trusting the promises of God. Building that foundation of faith, I think, is instrumental in the future of our church. Let me ask you something. What do you want for your family 20 years from now? Some of you uh, may have an idea of what that might look at, but what do you want? What do you desire? You know, the decision that's going to happen 20 years from now, that decision takes place today. It's not, I'm hoping for the best. But look, we've got, to, we've got to demonstrate, we've got to instruct, and we've got to learn uh, those foundational What do you want your church to look like in 20 years? Don't take for granted that it's always going to be here. There are churches that have gotten away from faith, and they have all they can do is what they see and what they touch and what they can hold. And I'm going to tell you, these churches are going to die. Most of them are in the downward spiral already, they do, and, they, and, and they just refuse to acknowledge it. I think this is one contributing factor, is that they have failed to believe and to trust God and to live it out through their life. God is the God of the impossible. God is the God that nothing is impossible with Him. Aren't you glad we serve a God like that? And I'm going to tell you, he's got promises to get us through every, every day of life. And I'm going to tell you, we've got to pass that on to the next generation coming behind us. And they must see the power of God through our life. They must see the promises of God lived out through our life so that, that can, they can see that the God of heaven is real. 
He wants to do that, but he's looking for people that will do it and live that way. Overcome the fear, overcome the anxiety, and just step out to do what God leads us to do and be obedient to the promises that he's made. Believe it. Let's stand together.